International Military Intervention Against ISIL, Wikipedia Article Audio Left, F-22 Raptor Refueling Before a Strike in Syria, Right, Peshmerga Special Forces Gathered Near Syria, Middle, An American F-18 Sea Hornet Aboard USS George H.W. Bush Prior to the Launch of Operations Over Iraq, Bottom, Map of the Situation in Iraq, Syria and Lebanon, as of February 26, 2018 International Coalitions Against ISIL US-led Coalitions September 5, 2014 Establishment of Combined Joint Task Force Operation Inherent Resolve in October 2014 December 3, 2014 France-led coalition Russia-led coalition Muslim States Coalition Turkish Intervention July 2015 Special Forces Operation Iranian Intervention Hezbollah Intervention Iraq Lebanon US-led intervention in Iraq Military aid to Kurds and Iraqis Building partner capacity Humanitarian efforts U.S. military actions U.S. airstrikes U.S. ground forces The late naming of Operation Inherent Resolve Australian airstrikes British airstrikes Canadian airstrikes Dutch airstrikes Ongoing French airstrikes Jordanian airstrikes Intervening in Syria and Iraq, JATFA Euro OIR, United States, Australia, Canada, Belgium, Denmark, Sweden, France, Germany, Italy, Norway, Turkey, Netherlands, Jordan, Morocco, Spain, United Kingdom Moroccan airstrikes Turkish contributions Iran Intervening in Syria only Support RSII coalition, Russia, Syria, Iran, Iraq Hezbollah Local forces Egyptian-led, intervention, Egypt, Libya Nigerian-led, intervention, Nigeria, Cameroon, Chad, Niger, Burundi, United States, see also, American military intervention Algeria Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant Al-Qaeda Turkestan Islamic Party Donald Trump, Barack Obama, Ashton Carter, James Mattis, Lloyd Austin, Joseph Dunford, David Cameron, Theresa May, Gavin Williamson, Michael Fallon, Nick Houghton, Stuart Peach, Andrew Pulford, Stephen Hillier, Tony Abbott, Malcolm Turnbull, David L. Johnston, Elio Dirupo, Charles Michel, Stephen Van Depot, Hamid Al Khalifa, Stephen Harper, Justin Trudeau, Thomas J. Lawson, Jonathan Vance, Heli Thorning Schmidt, Lars La K.K. Rasmussen, Peter Christensen, Peter Bartram, Jaran Basirab, Frana O.I.S. Hall and Emmanuel Macron, Jean. Eve L. E. Dryan, Pierre de Villers, Angela Merkel, Ursula von der Leyen, Volker Weicker, Matteo Renzi, Paolo Gentiloni, Claudio Graziano, Roberta Pinotti, King Abdullah II, Hani Al-Mulki, King Mohammed VI, 
Saade Dein Othmani, Bauche Barub, Ernest Solberg, Mark Rutt, Tom Mittendorp, Sander Schnitzer, Tamim Althani, King Abdullah A. Euro, King Salman, Recep Tayyip Erdoian, Binali A plus or minus Lda plus or minus R A plus or minus M, Hulusi Akar, Khalifa Al Nahayan, Bashar Al Assad, Nori Al Maliki, Fuad Masam, Haider Al Abadi, Masood Barzani, Jafar Sheikh Mustafa, Mustafa Said Qadir, Ali Khomeini, Hassan Rouhani, Qasim Soleimani, Hassan Nasr Allah, Vladimir Putin, Dmitry Medvedev, Sergei Shoigu, Viktor Bondarev, Andrei Kartapalov, Michelle Aoun, Tamam Salam, Jean Kawaji, Samir Mukbal, Walid Salman, Mamnoon Hussain, Nawaz Sharif, Raheel Sharif, Rizwan Akhtar, Ashraf Ghani, Abdullah Abdullah, Kais Al Hazali, Hadi Al Amari, Abdel Fattah El Sisi, Sedki Sobhai, Yuns Hamed, Agwila Saleh Issa, Khalifa Haftar, Saker Al Jorashi, Muhammad Abuari, Idris de Copyright by Paul Baya, Mahamad Al Isafu, Pierre Nguranziza, Abu Bakr al Baghdadi, Abu Ali al Anbari a Euro, Abu Muhammad al Adnani a Euro, Abu Ayman al Iraqi a Euro, Abu Suleiman al Nazar a Euro, Abu Muslim al Turkmani a Euro, Akram Kurbash a Euro, Abu Omar al Shishani a Euro, Abu Muhammad al Qadri a Euro, Abu Sayyaf a Euro, Abdul Qadr al Najdi, Abu Nabil al Anbari a Euro, Muhammad Abdullah, Salah bin Ali a Euro, Abu Farukh al Libi a Euro, Ali al Karkat, Ahmed al Ruarisi a Euro, Abu Bakr Sheko, Abu Abdullah al Filipini a Euro, Radalan Sahiran. Abu Kar al Masri a Euro Abu Jaber, Abu Muhammad al Jolani, Abu Humam al Shami a Euro, Abu Firaz al Suri a Euro, Abu Muhammad al Ansari a Euro, Muhammad Islam Bully, Musan al Fadli a Euro, Sanafi al Nasr a Euro, David Drugian a Euro, Said Arif a Euro, Abu Omar al Turkistani a Euro. Air strikes on ISIL and Al Qaeda positions in Iraq, Syria, Libya, Nigeria, and Afghanistan. Multinational humanitarian efforts, arming and supporting local ground forces. Millions of civilians in Iraq and Syria flee their homes, sparking a refugee crisis. Terrorist attacks in Paris, Brussels, and many other places. Thousands of civilians executed by ISIL forces in Iraq and Syria. ISIL controlled around 50% of Syria by late May 2015. ISIL controlled around 40% of Iraq at its peak in 2014. Emergence of Independently governed Kurdish regions. ISIL lost all of its territory in Libya. Boko Haram loses territory. Insurgency continues. ISIL controlled 5.67% of Syria's land by November 2017 and around 3% of Iraq by October 2017. ISIL loses all territory in Iraq and most territory in Syria in December 2017. A SLED intervention in Syria Hostage rescue attempt Aerial surveillance Arming and training rebels. Multinational airstrikes. Russian intervention. Intervention in Libya. Egyptian airstrikes. U.S. surveillance flights. U.S. airstrikes too. Other actions.
U.S. Intervention in Afghanistan U.S. Intervention in Cameroon U.S. Intervention in Yemen in Somalia Casualties ISIL Civilians Labeling Involvement by country Russia, Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, United Arab Emirates Iraqi Shia militias Boko Haram, Wilaya Barka, Wilaya Sinai, Wilaya Karazan, Wilaya Kavkaz, Abu Sayyaf Tarar al-Sham, al-Nusra Front, Karazan Group 200,000 fighters in Iraq and Syria, 20,000 a euro 31,500 6,500 a euro 10,000 fighters in Libya, 7,000 a euro 10,000 fighters in Nigeria, 1,000 a euro 3,000 fighters in Afghanistan, at least 400 fighters in the Philippines and Malaysia, up to 600 tanks, at least 6 drones. Terror Al Sham, 50,000 plus, Karazan, 50, Jund Alaksa, 2,100. 26,000 a euro, 30,000 plus, 16,000 plus killed and 13,000 plus wounded. 8,000 plus soldiers killed. 1,636 six three six a euro 1,805 fighters killed. 1,500 plus fighters killed. 6,000 plus fighters wounded. 52 fighters missing. Abu Jaber Sheikh. Strategic bombers. Tactical bombers. Attack bombers Fighter aircraft Reconnaissance aircraft, IL-20M1, attack helicopter Utility helicopter Ground equipment ISIL Al-Qaeda R. Al-Sham Republic of Iraq Syrian Arab Republic 700 security forces killed 101 servicemen killed 48 servicemen killed 35 servicemen killed 6 servicemen killed 16 servicemen wounded 6 servicemen killed 5 servicemen killed 4 servicemen killed Three border guards killed. 28 servicemen killed. One serviceman killed. One serviceman executed. 80,000 plus killed and 32,000 plus targets destroyed or damaged in Iraq and Syria. 1,500 a euro 2,500 killed in Libya. 300 killed in Afghanistan, 131 plus killed in Egypt, 298 plus killed, 10 killed, 3 killed. First Anbar, 1 St. Faluya, Syrian Kurdistan, Iraqi Kurdistan, First Hilla, 1 St. Baghdad, Khan Bani Saad. 2 nd Baghdad, Sharaban, Ramadai, Mosul, 3 rd Baghdad, Mike Dadiya, 2 nd Hila, Iskandaria, 4 th Baghdad, Samawa, 5 th Baghdad, 1 st Balad, Taji, 6 th Baghdad, 7 th Baghdad, 2 nd Balad, 8 th Baghdad, 9 th Baghdad, 3 rd Hila, 10 th Baghdad, 11 th Baghdad, 
Tikrit, 12 th Baghdad, Naziria, 13 th Baghdad. Egypt Iranian-led intervention, American-led intervention, inherent resolve, shader, okra, shamel, impact. Chad Nigeria Christian Genocide, Yazidi Genocide, Shia Genocide Iran Mosul Executions, Chemical Weapons United States Exposing ISIL's True Nature, Cutting Off ISIL's Financing and Funding, Supporting Military Operations Cameroon Turkey Niger Saudi Arabia Russia Canada Jordan Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant Al-Qaeda Jaish al-Sunnah Ar al-Sham 13,568 Iraqi and Syrian civilians killed by ISIL, 2,500 civilians killed by coalition airstrikes in Iraq and Syria, 2,142 civilians killed by ISIL in Syria, 7 civilians killed by airstrikes in Libya, 650 plus civilians killed by ISIL outside Iraq and Syria. Battles and Operations Major insurgent attacks Foreign interventions ISIL genocide of minorities ISIL war crimes In response to rapid territorial gains made by the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant during the first half of 2014, and its universally condemned executions, reported human rights abuses and the fear of further spillovers of the Syrian civil war, many states began to intervene against it in both the Syrian civil war and the Iraqi civil war. Later, there were also minor interventions by some states against ISIL-affiliated groups in Nigeria and Libya. In mid-June 2014, Iran, according to American and British information, started flying drones over Iraq, and, according to Reuters, Iranian soldiers were in Iraq fighting ISIL. Simultaneously, the United States ordered a small number of troops to Iraq and started flying crewed aircraft over Iraq. In July 2014, according to the International Institute for Strategic Studies, Iran sent Sukhoi Su-25 aircraft to Iraq, and Hezbollah purportedly sent trainers and advisors to Iraq to monitor ISIL's movements. In August 2014, the US and Iran separately began a campaign of airstrikes on ISIL targets in Iraq. Since then, 14 countries in a US-led coalition have also executed airstrikes on ISIL in Iraq and in Syria. In September 2015, Russian forces, with the permission of the Syrian government, began hundreds of bombing raids against ISIL, al-Nusra Front and the Free Syrian Army. Since the airstrikes started, ISIL has been losing ground in both Iraq and Syria. There have been multiple accounts of civilian deaths from the airstrikes. In mid-2016, the US and Russia plan to begin coordinating their airstrikes, however, this coordination did not materialize that year. As of December 2017, ISIL is estimated to control no territory in Iraq, and 5% of Syrian territory, after prolonged actions. On December 9, 2017, Iraq declared victory in the fight against ISIL and stated that the war in Iraq was over. Consequently, at the end of 2017, territorially ISIL was mainly defeated. On the margins of the 4-5 September 2014 NATO summit in Wales, 
U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry on September 5 invited ministers of the United Kingdom, France, Germany, Canada, Australia, Turkey, Denmark, and Italy, for a separate meeting in which he pressed them to support the fight against ISIL militarily and financially. Those nine countries agreed to do so by supporting anti-ISIL forces in Iraq and Syria with supplies and air support, according to a statement that day from Kerry and U.S. Secretary of Defense Hagel. On October 17, 2014, the Department of Defense formally established Combined Joint Task Force, Operation Inherent Resolve A Euro A Euro Superscript 3 in order to formalize ongoing military actions against the rising threat posed by ISIS in Iraq and Syria A Euro Superscript 3. On December 3, 2014, at the NATO headquarters in Brussels, diplomats and foreign ministers from 59 countries gathered to plot a way forward against the threat of ISIL. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry told the gathering, that defeating the ideology, the funding, the recruitment of DACE must be the primary focus of their discussion, more important than airstrikes and other military action. The countries represented on December 3rd were, the nine countries of the above-mentioned September 5th coalition in Wales, the extra 18 countries of the September 15 France-led coalition in Paris except for China and Russia, and 33 additional countries, Albania, Austria, Bosnia-Herzegovina, Bulgaria, Croatia, Cyprus, Estonia, Finland, Georgia, Greece, Hungary, Iceland, Ireland, Kosovo, Latvia. Lithuania, Luxembourg, Macedonia, Moldova, Montenegro, Morocco, New Zealand, Portugal, South Korea, Romania, Serbia, Singapore, Slovakia, Slovenia, Somalia, Sweden, Taiwan, and Ukraine. They styled themselves as the global coalition to counter the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant and agreed to a strategy that included. On September 15, 2014, at the A Euro International Conference on Peace and Security in Erika Euro trademark hosted by the French President Frana Ois Hall and in Paris, 26 countries were represented. The countries of a US-led coalition that on September 5th in Wales had agreed on a coalition against ISIL except Australia and Poland, and furthermore Bahrain, Egypt, Iraq, Jordan, Kuwait, Lebanon, Oman, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, Belgium, China, Czech Republic, Japan, the Netherlands, Norway, Russia and Spain. They committed themselves to supporting the Iraqi government with military assistance in its fight against ISIL, and they reaffirmed their commitment to UNSC Resolution 2170 of August 15, so reported the French government. In retaliation for the November 2015 Paris attacks, the French Air Force significantly intensified airstrikes against ISIL targets in Syria, hitting among other targets the Syrian city of Raqsa, the de facto capital of ISIL. At the end of September 2015, Russia, Iraq, Iran and Syria set up a joint information center in Baghdad to gather process and analyze current information about the situation in the Middle East a euro primarily for fighting is. On September 30, 2015, Russia began its air campaign on the side and in support of the Syrian government. Russia was also reported to have reached agreements on co-ordination of operations in Syria with Jordan and Israel. On March 14, 2016, Russian President Vladimir Putin announced a partial withdrawal from Syrian territory, 
citing the success of the ongoing ceasefire and greater security of the Syrian government. On December 10, 2017 Vladimir Putin ordered a similar withdrawal of Russian forces from Syria, stating that a complete withdrawal would be dependent on the ongoing situation. On December 14, 2015, Saudi Deputy Crown Prince and Defence Minister Mohammed bin Salman al Saud announced that 34 countries would join together in the fight against Muslim extremism, which he called a disease. Based out of Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, the coalition includes Bahrain, Bangladesh, Benin, Chad, Comoros, Cate d'Ivoire, Djibouti, Egypt, Gabon, Guinea, Jordan, Kuwait, Lebanon, Libya, Maldives, Mali, Malaysia, Morocco, Mauritania, Niger, Nigeria, Pakistan, Palestine, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Senegal, Sierra Leone, Somalia, Sudan, Turkey, Togo, Tunisia the United Arab Emirates and Yemen. ISIL is suspected of involvement in or responsibility for terrorist attacks in Turkey in May 2013 in Rehanla plus or minus and March 2014 on Turkish police, kidnapping 49 Turkish diplomats in June 2014, the June 5, 2015 Diyarbakir plus or minus R rally bombing and the July 20, 2015 Surua bombing which killed 32 young activists. Until July 2015, the Turkish government attacked ISIL only once, in January 2014. In September 2014 Turkey joined a US-led coalition A Euro to fight ISIL a Euro trademark. On July 23 according to various Turkish news outlets, 60 elite special forces operatives reportedly infiltrated El Bailai Ayas village, 9 kilometers from the Syria-Turkey border in Syria, and took it back from ISIL militants. Turkish tanks shelled the village the same day of the ground operation. The operation reportedly lasted over an hour and killed over 100 ISIL militants, according to reports. The Turkish general staff neither confirmed nor denied the special forces foray but did confirm shelling the village. The same day, Turkey allowed the United States to use a de Green Serlik and Diyarbakir plus or minus R air bases in southern Turkey for airstrikes on ISIL in Syria, and after an alleged ISIL attack on a Turkish border outpost in Kili's province killing one Turkish soldier, the Turkish army shelled ISIL militants in Syria, killing one militant and destroying several ISIL vehicles. On July 24, an anonymous report appeared on a Turkish newspaper website stating that the United States had agreed with Turkey on a Euro partial no fly zone a Euro trademark in northern Syria. On 24 and July 25, launched a military operation entitled A Euro Operation Martyr Yala A plus or minus an A Euro trademark against both ISIL in Syria and the Kurdistan Workers' Party in Iraq deploying at least 70 F-16 fighter jets. In mid-June 2014, according to American and British sources, Iran sent Qasem Soleimani, Major General of the Army of the Guardians of the Islamic Revolution, to Iraq help the government organize against ISIL. Later that month Iran started flying drones over Iraq, and by August, According to sources like Reuters, Iranian soldiers were in Iraq fighting ISIL. One war correspondent suggested that Iran joined the air war against ISIL on June 21. In July, according to the International Institute for Strategic Studies, Iran sent several Su-25 aircraft to Iraq, supported by Iranian-slash-Iraqi ground crews trained in Iran. In early August, 
those Su 25s began combat against ISIL, according to Business Insider. By September, according to Business Insider, Iranian Quds Force personnel were deployed to Samarra, Baghdad, Karbala, and the abandoned U.S. military post formerly known as Camp Spiker. At the end of November 2014, an Israeli website claimed to have seen Iranian F-4 Phantom II jet fighters bombing ISIL in eastern Iraq, a claim the U.S. Army verified. In March and May 2015, American commentators indicated Qasem Soleimani was leading Iraq's military strategy against ISIL. Already for a long time before June 2014, Hezbollah had a presence in Iraq of advisors offering guidance to Shia fighters, according to a Hezbollah commander interviewed by The National. In June 2014, Hezbollah reportedly set up a dedicated command center in Lebanon to monitor developments in Iraq. On June 17, Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasr Allah said that the party was ready to sacrifice martyrs in Iraq five times more than what we sacrificed in Syria in order to protect shrines. In July 2014, Hezbollah sent more technical trainers and advisors to Iraq, to monitor ISIL's movements, according to a Hezbollah commander. Shortly thereafter, Hezbollah commander Ibrahim al haj was reported killed in action near Mosul. An August Reuters story reported there were dozens of Hezbollah battle-hardened veterans in Iraq, while the Christian Science Monitor reported the party had deployed a 250-man unit responsible for advising, training, and coordinating the Iraqi Shiite militias. In February 2015, NASR Allah confirmed that he had sent troops to fight in Iraq. In June 2015, Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasr Allah claimed that ISIL and Nusra had taken a foothold in Lebanon and that fierce battles were raging between them and Hezbollah, as well as each other. After having started flying crewed aircraft over Iraq and sending some troops in June, in August 2014 the U.S. military began supplying Iraqi Kurdish Peshmerga with weapons, dropping food for refugees fleeing from ISIL, and airstrikes against ISIL in Iraq. On August 9, speaking about U.S. airstrikes in Iraq, President Barack Obama said this is going to be a long-term project. Since then, Nine countries allied with the U.S. have also executed airstrikes on ISIL in Iraq, and various countries have contributed military and humanitarian aid to Iraqi government and Iraqi Kurdish ground forces. On 16 Euro 19 August, according to the U.S., Kurdish and Iraqi government forces, with the help of U.S. airstrikes, took back the Mosul Dam the largest dam in Iraq. Obama announced on September 10, 2014 that the number of airstrikes in Iraq would increase and that he had dispatched 500 more U.S. troops there. On August 5, 2014, Zalma E. Khalilzad, the former U.S. ambassador to Iraq and the U.N., wrote in the Washington Post that the United States is involved in the direct supply of munitions to the Kurds and, with Baghdad's agreement, the shipment of some foreign military sales program weapons to the Kurds. The United States moved from indirectly supplying Kurdistan with small arms through the CIA to directly giving them weapons such as man-portable anti-tank systems. In a coordinated effort led by the United States, many allied countries including NATO members and Middle Eastern partners have supplied or planned to supply Iraqi and slash or Kurdish forces with heavy military equipment, small arms, ammunition, non-lethal military gear, and training support. 
The Building Partner Capacity Program is meant to help the Iraqi government to prepare forces for the counter-attack against ISIL and the regaining of its territory. According to the U.S. Department of Defense, by May 2015 a dozen countries had committed themselves to the BPC program, Australia, Belgium, Canada, Denmark, France, Germany, Italy, Netherlands, New Zealand, Norway, Spain, United Kingdom and United States, and 6,500 Iraqi forces had been trained by BPC. The United States, the United Kingdom, and Australia, supported by international partners, launched a large humanitarian effort to support refugees stranded in northern Iraq. This included airdropping tens of thousands of meals and thousands of gallons of drinking water to Yazidi refugees stranded in the Sinjar Mountains and threatened by advancing ISIL forces, between 7 a Euro 14 August 2014 in what was later described as the first mass air delivery of humanitarian cargo since the outbreak of violence in East Timor in 1999. Thousands of Yazidis and other Iraqi civilians fled to the area following attacks on their villages and the town of Sinjar throughout late July and early August 2014. Several human rights and observer organizations in the region reported that those who fled to the mountains were subjected to starvation, and lacked clean drinking water and medical care for several months as ISIL militants surrounded them. Hundreds of men, women, and children were abducted and killed. In response to the immediate threat to the approximately 30,000 people trapped on the mountain, coalition aircraft commenced humanitarian aid drops. These airdrops included basic supplies such as food, water, and shelter and were conducted at low flight levels by coalition transport aircraft under the threat of ISIL surface-to-air attacks. In direct support of humanitarian aid drops, CF-18S provided top cover for a Royal Australian Air Force C-130 Hercules transport aircraft on November 20, ensuring the transport crew was able to safely parachute supplies to waiting refugees below. Canadian fighter jets remained in close proximity to the transport aircraft to protect it from ISIL surface-to-air threats or attacks. In June 2014, U.S. forces had started undertaking reconnaissance missions over northern Iraq. On August 7, President Obama gave a live address describing the worsening conditions in Iraq and that the plight of the Yazidis particular had convinced him that U.S. military action was necessary to protect American lives, protect minority groups in Iraq, and to stop a possible ISIL advance on Erbil the capital of the Kurdish Autonomous Region. On August 8, the United States started to bomb ISIL targets in Iraq. By August 10, assisted by these air attacks, Kurdish forces claimed to have recaptured the towns of Mamor and Gwair from Islamic State control. Additional Iraqi airstrikes conducted in Sinjar were reported to have killed 45 ISIL militants and injured an additional 60 militants. On August 11, a spokesperson for the Pentagon said the airstrikes had slowed down ISIL's advance in northern Iraq, but were unlikely to degrade ISIL's capabilities or operations in other areas. Between 8 and August 13, U.S. airstrikes and Kurdish ground forces enabled 35,000 to 45,000 of Yazidi refugees to escape or be evacuated from the Sinjar Mountains. On August 16, U.S. air power began a close air campaign aimed at supporting the advance of Kurdish fighters moving toward the Mosul Dam. Kurdish sources commented that it was the heaviest U.S. bombing of militant positions since the start of air strikes.
Obama on August 17 defended this usage of U.S. forces as support of the Iraqi and Kurdish fight in general against Isla Euro which indeed went beyond Obama's reasoning for launching airstrikes on August 7. On September 8, the Iraqi army, with close air support from the U.S., retook the Kihaditha Dam, and recaptured the town of Barwena, killing 15 ISIL fighters. ISIL responded with the public execution of David Haynes. By the end of September 2014, the United States had conducted 240 airstrikes in Iraq and Syria, as well as 1,300 tanker refueling missions, totaling 3,800 sorties by all types of aircraft. A tactical arrangement with Kurdish and Iraqi forces, and drone videos are being used to coordinate close air support without needing U.S. troops in ground combat. On December 19, 2014, U.S. General James Terry announced that the number of U.S. airstrikes on ISIL had increased to 1,361. On December 25, 2014, Hassan Saeed al Jaburai, the ISIL governor of Mosul, who was also known as Abu Talut, was killed by a US led coalition airstrike in Mosul. It was also reported that the U.S. planned to retake the city of Mosul in January 2015. On January 15, 2015, it was reported that over 16,000 airstrikes had been carried out by the coalition. The U.S. Air Force has carried out around 60% of all strikes. Among them, F-16S performed 41% of all sorties, followed by the F-15E at 37%, then the A-10 at 11%, the B-1 bomber at 8%, and the F-22 at 3%. The remaining 40% has been carried out by the U.S. Navy and Allied Nations. On January 20, 2015, the SOAR reported that al-Baghdadi, the leader of ISIL, had been wounded in an airstrike in al-Qa'im, an Iraqi border town held by ISIL, and as a result, withdrew to Syria. On January 21, 2015, the U.S. began coordinating airstrikes with a Kurdish-launched offensive, to help them begin the planned operation to retake the city of Mosul. On July 21, 2015, it was reported that nearly 44,000 sorties have flown since August 2014. In July, Obama announced that due to the continuing violence in Iraq and the growing influence of non-state organizations, such as the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant, the United States would be elevating its security commitment in the region. Approximately 800 U.S. troops secured American installations like the embassy in Baghdad and the consulate in Erbil as well as taking control of strategic locations like the Baghdad airport in cooperation with Iraqi troops. U.S. forces also undertook a mission to assess and to advise as they confront and the complex security situation on the ground. Reports from these American units about the capabilities of the Iraqi military have been consistently grim, viewing them as compromised by sectarian interests. On August 13, 2014, the U.S. deployed another 130 military advisors to northern Iraq and up to 20 U.S. Marines and Special Forces servicemen landed on Mount Sinjar from V-22 aircraft to coordinate the evacuation of Yazidi refugees joining British SAS already in the area. On September 3, 2014, Obama announced increase of U.S. forces in Iraq to 1,213. On September 10, Obama gave a speech reiterating that U.S. troops will not fight in combat, 
but about 500 more troops will be sent to Iraq to help train Iraqi forces. In early November 2014, Obama announced that he would be doubling the U.S. ground presence inside Iraq to around 3,000 men. By early December 2014, the number of U.S. ground troops in Iraq had increased to 3,100. On December 9, 2014, the United States Senate Committee on Foreign Relations authorized U.S. military force against ISIL. However, it limits military force to three years, requires the administration to report to Congress every 60 days, and prohibits the deployment of U.S. combat troops, except in specific cases, such as those involving the rescue or protection of U.S. soldiers, or for intelligence operations. During the early morning hours of December 14, 2014, U.S. ground forces allegedly clashed with ISIL alongside the Iraqi army and tribal forces near the An Al Assad Air Base, west of Anbar, in an attempt to repel them from the base of which includes about 100 U.S. advisors in it, when ISIL attempted to overrun the base. According to a field commander of the Iraqi army in Anbar province, said that the U.S. force equipped with light and medium weapons, supported by F-18, was able to inflict casualties against fighters of ISIL organization, and forced them to retreat from the Aldo Lab area, which lies 10 kilometers from An Al-Assad base. Sheikh Mahmoud Nimra'i, a prominent tribal leader in the region, added that U.S. forces intervened because of ISIL started to come near the base, which they are stationed in so out of self-defense, he responded, welcoming the U.S. intervention, and saying which I hope will not be the last. This was said to be the first encounter between the United States and the Islamic State, in four years. However, this claim has been stated to be false by the Pentagon. On January 5, 2015, the Pentagon acknowledged that ISIL had been ineffectively mortaring the base. In late February 2015, another 1,300 U.S. soldiers were deployed to Iraq, increasing the number of U.S. ground troops in Iraq to 4,400. Unlike their coalition partners, and unlike previous American combat operations, no name was initially given to the 2014 intervention against ISIL by the U.S. government. The decision to keep the conflict nameless drew considerable media criticism. U.S. service members remain ineligible for campaign medals and other service decorations due to the continuing ambiguous nature of the continuing U.S. involvement in Iraq. On October 15, 2014, the United States Central Command announced that the U.S.-led air campaign against ISIL in Iraq and Syria was henceforth designated as Operation Inherent Resolve. The CENTCOM news release noted. According to CENTCOM officials, the name Inherent Resolve is intended to reflect the unwavering resolve and deep commitment of the U.S. and partner nations in the region and around the globe to eliminate the terrorist group ISIL and the threat they pose to Iraq, the region, and the wider international community. It also symbolizes the willingness and dedication of coalition members to work closely with our friends in the region and apply all available dimensions of national power necessary a Euro diplomatic, informational, military, economic a Euro to degrade and ultimately destroy ISIL. On October 3, 2014, Prime Minister Tony Abbott and the Australian Cabinet approved for ROF Boeing F-A-18F Super Hornet fighter bombers to begin airstrikes against Islamic State militants. Abbott said it is in our national interest that we do so, it is in the interests of civilization that we do so.
it is in everyone's best interests that the murderous rage of the Isil death cult be checked and rolled back and that's what we're determined to do. On October 6, Air Chief Marshal Mark Binskin announced two Super Hornets had conducted armed combat missions over Iraq although no armaments were expended. An Australian Air Task Group KC-30A and an E-7A Wedgetail Airborne Early Warning and Control aircraft have also been flying in support to fighter bombers belonging to coalition forces. The KC-30A performs airborne refueling for coalition aircraft. Binskin said one of our Super Hornet packages on the first night had an identified target which it was tracking and that particular target moved into an urban area where the risks of conducting a strike on that target increased to a point where it exceeded our expectations of collateral damage, so they discontinued the attack at that point. On October 9, Prime Minister Tony Abbott confirmed that ROF Super Hornets had been involved in a strike missions on an ISIL position in Iraq. The aircraft dropped two bombs onto an isolated building which ISIL was using as a command and control center. As of October 17, the Royal Australian Air Force had conducted 43 combat sorties over Iraq. Recent strikes had targeted equipment facilities, with at least two resulting in ISIL casualties after Australian aircraft had increased the number of missions flown to allow US and coalition forces to assist Kurdish fighters around Kobana registered trademark, in northern Syria. After more than two years of involvement in the coalition, Australia announced the end of its airstrikes in Iraq, after informing Iraq and other allies. On August 12, 2014, the United Kingdom deployed six Tornado GR-4 strike aircraft to RAF Akrotiri in Cyprus to help coordinate its humanitarian aid airdrops in northern Iraq. On August 16, 2014, following the completion of humanitarian aid airdrops, the Tornado GR-4S, along with an RC-135 Rivet Joint Signals Intelligence aircraft, were retasked to provide aerial surveillance to coalition forces. In early September 2014, British Prime Minister David Cameron began voicing his support for British airstrikes against ISIL in Iraq. Weeks later, Parliament was recalled and members debated whether or not to authorize airstrikes. The seven-hour debate resulted in overwhelming support for airstrikes, with 524 votes in favor and 43 votes against. On September 27, 2014, the first armed sortie took place over Iraq. A pair of Tornado GR-4S left Cyprus armed with laser-guided bombs, supported by a Voyager aerial refueling tanker. Ultimately, the aircraft did not locate any targets requiring immediate air attack and so gathered intelligence for coalition forces instead. The Royal Air Force conducted its first airstrike on September 30, 2014. A pair of Tornado GR-4S engaged an ISIL heavy weapon position in an armed pickup truck using a laser-guided bomb and air-to-surface missile. On October 3, 2014, the RAF deployed two additional Tornado aircraft to bring its deployed fleet up to eight aircraft. During the same month, it was also confirmed that the Royal Navy was involved in anti-ISIL operations in a support role, with Air Defense Destroyer HMS Defender providing escort to U.S. Navy aircraft carrier USS George H.W. Bush as she launched aircraft into Iraq and Syria. Nick Clegg, then Deputy Prime Minister, also disclosed during an interview that there was a nuclear attack submarine armed with Tomahawk cruise missiles deployed to the region. On October 16, 2014, 
the Ministry of Defense announced it would deploy MQ-9 Reaper drones to assist with surveillance, although, Defense Secretary Michael Fallon stated that the drones could also conduct airstrikes if required. The first Reaper drone strike occurred weeks later in Beji, north of Baghdad, against a group of ISIL militants which had been laying improvised explosive devices. In addition to operations over Iraq, the United Kingdom had also intervened in Syria by October 21, 2014, making it the first Western country, other than the United States, to do so. However, British aircraft were not permitted to carrying out airstrikes until Parliament had voted to give its authorization. Despite this, the Royal Air Force carried out a drone strike in Syria on August 21, 2015, against two UK-born ISIL fighters which had been plotting attacks against the United Kingdom. Prime Minister David Cameron insisted that it was a lawful act of self-defence. Since the authorization of airstrikes in Iraq, Prime Minister David Cameron had made persistent calls for airstrikes in Syria, however, he acknowledged that no airstrikes would take place until after a vote in Parliament. On December 2, 2015, following the November 2015 Paris attacks and United Nations Security Council Resolution 2249, David Cameron opened a 10-hour debate in Parliament on Syrian airstrikes, which ended with a final vote. 397 MPs voted in favour of airstrikes, whilst 223 voted against. Airstrikes commenced two hours after the vote, taking place in eastern Syria against the ISIL-held Oman oil field. Defence Secretary Michael Fallon also subsequently announced that the UK's strike force based in Cyprus would double, with the addition of six Eurofighter Typhoons and two Tornado GR4S. As of September 2015, a year after operations first began, more than 330 ISIL fighters had been killed by British airstrikes in Iraq, without any civilian casualties. In addition to airstrikes, the United Kingdom has also made significant contributions towards the coalition's ISTAR capabilities. The Royal Air Force has deployed Sentinel R-1, Sentry AEW-1, RC-135W Rivet Joint and Shadow R-1 aircraft to gather surveillance, in addition to Tornado GR-4 and MQ-9 Reaper strike aircraft. In September 2015, the United Kingdom was responsible for a third of all coalition surveillance flights over Iraq and Syria, with the Tornado GR-4S Raptor reconnaissance pod accounting for 60% of the coalition's entire tactical reconnaissance in Iraq alone. In December 2016, the Telegraph reported that Secretary of State for Defence Sir Michael Fallon said the British Army have trained over 31,000 Iraqi and Peshmerga who are taking the fight to days. It was also reported that the Royal Air Force is operating at its most intense for 25 years in a single theatre of operation which far outstripped the UK involvement in the Iraq War and the war in Afghanistan with RAF jets having dropped 11 times more bombs on Syria and Iraq in the preceding 12 months than they had in the busiest year of action in Afghanistan a decade previously. Canada took part in airstrikes against ISIL from November 2, 2014 until February 22, 2016 when following the election of Justin Trudeau to Prime Minister withdrew its CF-18S fighter jets and ended all airstrikes in Syria and Iraq. The Canadian contribution has been codenamed Operation Impact by the Canadian Department of National Defence. Canadian aircraft left for the Middle East to join in airstrikes on October 21, 2014. In total, 
six CF-18 fighter jets, an Airbus CC-150 Polaris air-to-air -air refueling tanker and two CP-140 Aurora surveillance aircraft were sent, along with 700 military personnel. Canadian CF-18 fighter jets completed their first operational flights departing from Kuwait on October 31st. The first Canadian airstrikes began on November 2nd. Canada also flew an extra CF-18 to Kuwait to be used as a spare if the need arises, however a maximum of six are authorized to fly with the coalition missions. On November 4, 2014, Royal Canadian Air Force CF-18S destroyed ISIL construction equipment using GBU-12 bombs. The construction equipment was being used to divert the Euphrates River to deny villages water, and to flood roads, diverting traffic to areas with IEDs. On November 12, 2014, Canadian jets destroyed ISIL artillery just outside the northern Iraqi town of Beji. Airstrikes continued throughout December and into January 2015 totaling 28 strike missions. It was then reported that Canadian Special Forces troops, which had been highlighting targets for airstrikes, had engaged in fighting after coming under attack. On January 19, 2015, Canadian Special Operations Forces came under ISIL attack for the first time in Iraq over the last week, and returned sniper fire to neutralize the threat. Canadians are enabling airstrikes from the ground, meaning they are actively finding targets for jets flying overhead. On January 29, 2015, Canadian Special Forces in Iraq came under fire from ISIL forces, causing the Canadian troops to return fire, killing some ISIL militants. On March 6, a Canadian soldier was killed in a friendly fire incident by Kurdish forces while returning to an observation post. On April 8, 2015, Two CF-18S carried out their first airstrike against ISIL in Syria, hitting one of the group's garrisons. From November 2, 2014 to May 13, 2015 the Canadian Armed Forces struck 80 ISIL fighting positions, 19 ISIL vehicles, and 10 storage facilities. On October 21, 2015, Canadian Prime Minister-designate Justin Trudeau informed U.S. President Barack Obama that he intended to withdraw Canadian aircraft from operations over Iraq and Syria but increase training missions on the ground. On February 8, 2016, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau announced that the CF-18S would be withdrawn from the bombing mission no later than February 22, 2016. However, the surveillance aircraft and air-to-air -air jet refueler would continue. In addition, the amount of training troops would triple. On September 24, 2014, the Dutch government announced its participation in the military campaign against ISIL which, as they claimed, had been started by the United States, and sent six F-16 fighter jets to Iraq to bomb ISIL. Their motivations to join this war, ISIL's advance in Iraq and Syria, while displaying unprecedented violence and perpetrating terrible crimes against population groups, formed a direct threat for that region, ISIL's advance in Iraq and Syria causes instability at the borders of Europe which threatens our own safety. In January 2016, the Netherlands extended their bombings of ISIL to Syrian territory. By the end of July 2016 the Dutch Air Task Force flew more than 2,100 missions and carried out over 1,800 air strikes. On September 19, 2014, 
the French Air Force used its Rafale jets to conduct airstrikes on ISIL targets in Mosul. The airstrikes were approved by French President Frana Ois Hollande, which indicated that France was committed to fighting ISIL using air power alongside the United States. Hollande mentioned that no ground troops would be used in the conflict. To conduct its airstrikes, France deployed nine Rafale fighters to the United Arab Emirates, six Dassault Mirage 2000 fighters to Jordan, in addition to an Atlantique II maritime patrol aircraft, a Boeing E3 Sentry airborne early warning and control aircraft, and a Boeing KC-135 Stratotanker aerial refueling tanker. On February 23, 2015, the French Navy also deployed its Task Force 473 Carrier Strike Group to the Persian Gulf with the intent on conducting airstrikes from the aircraft carrier Charles de Gaulle. The Charles de Gaulle contributed 12 Rafale fighters, 9 Dassault Brigitte Super A per thousand tendered strike aircraft, and 2 E2C Hawkeye Airborne Early Warning and Control Aircraft. The task force also included the French frigate Chevalier Paul, a Rubis-class submarine, a Durance-class tanker, and the British frigate HMS Kent. After eight weeks of operations, the task force left the Persian Gulf on its way to India, heralding the end of its contribution to Operation Shamal. On November 5, 2015, it was announced that the Charles de Gaulle would resume operations in Syria to fight ISIL. On November 15, 2015, after the November 2015 Paris attacks, the French Air Force launched its largest airstrike of the bombing campaign sending 12 planes, including 10 fighters, that dropped 20 bombs in training camps and ammunition facilities in Raqsa the de facto capital of ISIS. After the downed Jordanian pilot Mu'ath al kazispa was executed by ISIL by being burned to death, King Abdullah II vowed revenge and temporarily took the lead in the bombing raids on ISIL during February 2015. On February 8, Jordan claimed that during the course of three days, from 5 Euro 7 February, their airstrikes alone had killed 7,000 ISIL militants in Iraq and Syria, and also reportedly degraded 20% of the militant group's capability. In December 2014 Morocco sent four F-16s to bomb ISIL positions, initially in the outskirts of Baghdad and other undisclosed locations. The planes operated under the command of the UAE and suspended operations in February 2015. See Overview in Section Turkish Intervention On July 4, 2014, the US bombed the Osama bin Laden ISIL military base in the village of Okari Shah, Syria. Two dozen American Delta Force commandos then touched down in an effort to rescue hostages, including James Foley. In a series of videos, Foley, Stephen Joel Sotloff, and several more hostages were murdered. On August 26, 2014, the U.S. began sending surveillance flights, including drones into Syria to gather intelligence. The Syrian Arab Republic was not asked for permission, on August 28, speaking about combating ISIL in Syria, President Obama said we don't have a strategy yet. The British Royal Air Force has been operating over Syria in a surveillance role since October 21, 2014 making the UK the first Western country other than the United States to operate in both Iraq and Syria simultaneously. At the direction of President Obama, the US Central Intelligence Agency played an active role since the early stages of the Syrian civil war. 
The U.S. originally supplied the moderate rebels of the Free Syrian Army with non-lethal aid but soon escalated to providing training, money, and intelligence to selected rebel commanders. On September 17, 2014, the House of Representatives voted to authorize spending to train and arm moderate Syrian rebels. The United Kingdom announced in March 2015 that it would send 75 military personnel to help train moderate Syrian forces in the use of small arms, infantry tactics, and basic medical skills. The training will take place in Turkey as part of the US-led effort. According to the United States Department of Defense, Saudi Arabia has proposed that they would provide training to Syrian rebels so they could return to Syria and battle ISIL. As of September 2015, the results have been limited, with only a small number trained and many captured, killed, or not fighting. U.S. President Obama announced on September 10, 2014 that he would begin to pursue airstrikes in Syria with or without congressional approval. Starting on September 22, 2014, the U.S., Bahrain, Jordan, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates began airstrikes against ISIL targets in Syria with fighters, bombers, and sea-based Tomahawk cruise missiles. Strikes continue to take place in Syria daily. Additionally, on the first night, U.S. forces launched eight cruise missile strikes against the Al-Qaeda-affiliated Khorasan. In early November – early December 2014, the U.S. launched additional airstrikes against the same group. In November 2014, Morocco sent three F-16s to be deployed in UAE, to fight ISIL in Iraq and Syria under U.S.-led operations. On December 24, 2014, ISIL shot down a Jordanian fighter jet over Syria and captured its pilot. Jordanian Air Force Lt. Mu'ath al Kazisba. al Kazisba was offered in exchange for captured ISIL fighters. Jordan offered to make the exchange, but demanded proof of life first. However, al Kazisba had already been executed by immolation. When video of the pilot's execution was released, a moratorium on executions in Jordan was lifted and the Al-Qaeda operatives, Sajida al-Rishai and Jihad al-Karbuli were executed. On August 21, 2015, three ISIL fighters, two with UK nationality, were targeted and killed in Raqsa, Syria by a British Royal Air Force MQ-9 Reaper strike. Prime Minister David Cameron gave a statement to Parliament that one of the British nationals targeted had been plotting attacks in the United Kingdom. Another British national was killed in a separate airstrike by U.S. forces in Raqsa on August 24. In October and November 2015, the U.S. intensified its airstrikes on ISIL held oil facilities in an operation named Tidal Wave 2 after the World War II campaign against Axis oil targets in Romania. The U.S. strategy aimed to knock out specific installations for six months to a year by focusing on facilities near Deir el-Zur. The Omar oil field, which produced 30,000 barrels of oil per day and $1.7 million to $5.1 million in revenue per month at full capacity, was hit on October 21, reducing it to roughly a third of its capacity. French aircraft also participated in the strikes. On November 16, 2015, a U.S. Operation Tidal Wave 2 sortie destroyed 116 IS fuel tankers clustered near Abu Kamal, a town on the Syrian border near Iraqi. Four A-10 Thunderbolt IIS and two AC-130 Spectre gunships participated in the raid. 
Before attacking the trucks the planes conducted several low-level, show-of-force passes. On December 2, the Parliament of the United Kingdom voted in favour to authorise airstrikes in Syria. Within hours, RAF tornado jets carried out their first airstrikes, targeting the Omar oil fields in eastern Syria, which is under his control. Tornado GR-4 jets are being used for surveillance and a further six typhoons left RAF Lossy Mouth, Scotland to join forces at RAF Akrotiri, Serpus. On December 4, 2015 Germany intervened in reaction to the November 2015 Paris attacks by sending a frigate and Panavia Tornado reconnaissance aircraft to the region. On January 29, 2016, the Netherlands announced its intent on expanding its airstrike operations to Syria. On September 11, 2015, a Syrian military source made mention of Russian troops present in Syria to help the Syrian government in its fight against ISIL, as part of Operation Rescue. On September 17, Syrian warplanes carried out a wave of airstrikes in the ISIL-held city of Raqsa with Russian weapons supplied by Russian armed forces. On November 20, Russia claimed to have killed over 600 terrorists using cruise missiles in one mission. After ISIL killed 21 Egyptian Coptic Christians in Libya, Egypt conducted airstrikes on ISIL targets in Libya on February 16, 2015, killing a total of 64 ISIL militants. Warplanes acting under orders from the official Libyan government also struck targets in Derna, reportedly in coordination with Egypt's airstrikes. A Libyan official stated that more joint airstrikes would follow. Concern over ISIL activities in Derna district in Libya in December 2014 led to U.S. drones and electronic surveillance planes making constant flights from Italian bases, over the district of Derna. On November 13, 2015, the United States launched an airstrike in Derna, Libya. Two US F 15E fighter jets targeted senior ISIL leader Abu Nabil Al Anbari in the airstrike, who was the top ISIL commander in Libya. In January 2016, ISIL's Libyan faction confirmed Abu Nabil's death in a eulogy to him. Administration officials are weighing a new campaign plan for Libya that would deepen the United States military and diplomatic involvement on yet another front against ISIL. The United States and its allies are increasing reconnaissance flights and intelligence collecting their euro and even preparing for possible airstrikes and raids, according to senior American officials. Special operations forces have met with various Libyan groups over the past months to vet them for possible action against ISIL. On February 19, 2016, U.S. warplanes carried out an airstrike on multiple ISIL targets in Libya, hitting an Islamic State training camp and a senior extremist leader. The training camp was near Sabratha, Libya. Sixty people were present at the camp at the time of the strike. More than 40 people were killed with more wounded, some critically. On February 14, 2016, AU.N designated council presented a new 18-member Libyan cabinet in the Moroccan city of Skyrat, weeks after an earlier lineup was rejected. The internationally recognized parliament has to endorse the new unity cabinet. If approved, the new unity government could eventually seek international military intervention against Islamic State extremists who have taken advantage of the country's political vacuum since 2014. On August 1, 2016, U.S. crewed and uncrewed aircraft carried out airstrikes on its targets in Libya, 
responding to the U.N-backed government's request to help push the militants from their former stronghold of Surti, in what U.S. officials described as the start of a sustained campaign against the extremist group in the city. President Barack Obama authorized the airstrikes after a recommendation by U.S. Secretary of Defense Ash Carter, the strikes hit an IS tank and two vehicles that posed a threat to forces aligned with Libyan GNA. This was the third U.S. airstrike against Islamic State militants in Libya, but this time U.S. officials said it marked the start of a sustained air campaign rather than another isolated strike. U.S. airstrikes will continue to target ISIL and Surti in order to enable the GNA to make a decisive, strategic advance. U.S. AFRICOM Command is overseeing the U.S. effort, which is known as Operation Odyssey Lightning, a V-8B Harrier II assigned to the 22nd MEU flying off the USS WASP conducted the airstrikes and uncrewed aircraft launched from undisclosed locations. Airstrikes continued. On August 2, airstrikes hit a rocket launcher, an excavator, and a pickup truck with a mounted recoilless rifle, and on August 3, airstrikes struck a pickup truck with a mounted recoilless rifle. By August 9, the U.S. conducted 28 strikes against ISIS in Libya, with more than half of the strikes being conducted from uncrewed aircraft. By August 16, U.S. airstrikes hit an IS vehicle and four militant positions in Surti, bringing the number of U.S. airstrikes in Libya to 48. On August 17, U.S. Africa Command officials announced on August 16 airstrikes on ISIS targets in Surti struck seven enemy fighting positions, four vehicle-borne bombs, one pickup truck with a mounted recoilless rifle. 12 enemy fighting positions and one command and control vehicle, bringing the total number of airstrikes in support of Operation Odyssey Lightning to 57. On August 22, Stars and Stripes reported that U.S. Marine A-1W Super Cobra helicopters participated in strikes against his militants in Surti on 20 and 21 August. A small detachment of U.S. Special Forces in Surti provided most of the targeting information for the airstrikes which were then relayed to U.S. forces through Libyan government troops. On August 31, Stars and Stripes reported that in the past month, the U.S. military conducted 104 airstrikes against its targets in Libya. On September 22, Stars and Stripes reported that the pace of U.S. airstrikes against his militants in Libya slowed in September as the number of insurgents holed up in a hard-to-target section of Surti had shrunk, with about 200 militants remaining. On September 28, Fox News reported that as of September 26, U.S. Marine Corps Harrier jets and attack helicopters as well as drones conducted 175 airstrikes against ISIS in Libya, according to the U.S. military's Africa Command. According to a U.S. official the number of ISIS fighters in Surti was estimated to be under 100 and that ISIS is only in three neighborhoods. On October 3, Stars and Stripes reported that on October 2 the U.S. conducted 20 airstrikes in Libya, knocking out a command and control facility, nearly 70 IS fighting positions and several other sites in what was the heaviest day of bombing since the operation began, according to U.S. Africa Command data. The strikes were in support of an offensive by ground forces aligned with the internationally backed Libyan government. On October 11, Stars and Stripes reported that U.S. warplanes conducted 51 airstrikes against its targets in Libya, particularly in and around Surti, between 7 and October 10, marking it as some of the heaviest bombing since the start of the operation bringing the total number of U.S. airstrikes in Libya to 261. On October 17, 
Fox News reported that U.S. airstrikes against ISIS in Libya doubled in less than a month. On October 21, 2016, Stars and Stripes reported that USS San Antonio deployed to the Mediterranean Sea as part of Operation Odyssey Lightning to replace the USS Wasp that was carrying out operations against ISIS. The San Antonio will carry a 1Y Hueys and a 1W Cobras from the 22nd MUA Euro Trademark S Aviation Combat Unit, VMM-264. Marine Harrier fighters were part of the operation aboard the WASP, however the San Antonio does not host fighter jets. On November 4, 2016, Fox News reported that the U.S. military ended its bombing campaign against ISIS in Surti after three months of round-the-clock airstrikes the U.S. military conducted a total of 367 airstrikes since August 1, 2016, according to officials, no American airstrikes took place since 31 October. Units taking part in the operation received orders on November 1 from AFRICOM to end offensive and collective self-defense airstrikes. A senior defense official said the U.S. military would continue to provide military support to the GNA. ISIL-held territory in Surti is down to a few hundred square meters. We'll continue to discuss with the GNA leadership what additional support they may need moving forward including air strikes. Surti was liberated by GNA forces in early December. On December 20, 2016, ABC News reported that AFRICOM said that it carried out 495 airstrikes against militant vehicles and positions in the former IS stronghold of Surti. Operation Odyssey Lightning concluded on December 19, following an announcement from the Libyan government of the end of offensive military operations in Surti. On January 18, 2017, ABC News reported that two U.S. Air Force B-2 bombers struck two ISIS camps 28 miles south of Surti. The airstrikes targeted between 80 and 100 ISIS fighters in multiple camps. An uncrewed aircraft also participated in the airstrikes. One official called the airstrikes a huge success, with more than 80 ISIS fighters killed. One counterterrorism official told ABC News there were zero survivors at the camps. Many of the ISIS fighters in the camps had fled Surti during the battle, according to another official, Pentagon Press Secretary Peter Cook said in a statement ISIS fighters had fled to the remote desert camps in order to reorganize and they posed a security threat to Libya, the region, and U.S. national interests. The militants were carrying weapons, wearing tactical vests and standing in formation. The airstrikes were authorized by President Obama and were carried out in coordination with GNA, they are considered to be an extension of Operation Odyssey Lightning. BBC News reported that the B-2S flew a round trip of around 34 hours from Missouri and dropped around 100 bombs on their targets, U.S. Defense Secretary Ash Carter said those targeted were actively planning attacks in Europe. NBC News later reported that the number of his fighters killed was revised upward to 90, a U.S. defense official said that this was the largest remaining ISIS presence in Libya, and that they have been largely marginalized but I am hesitant to say they've been completely eliminated in Libya. On September 22, 2017, the U.S. military conducted six airstrikes with unmanned aircraft on an ISIS camp 150 miles southeast of Surti, killing 17 ISIS militants and destroying three vehicles, CNN reported an AFRICOM statement that the strikes took place in coordination with Libya's government of national accord and aligned forces and that the camp was used by ISIS to move fighters in and out of the country stockpile weapons and equipment, and to plot and conduct attacks.
the strikes marked the first time airstrikes had been carried out in the country under the Donald Trump administration. The U.S. military has been closely monitoring Islamic State movements in Libya, and small teams of U.S. military personnel has moved in and out of the country over a period of months. British, French, Italian and Jordanian special forces as well as the British RAF also have been in Libya helping with aerial surveillance, mapping and intelligence gathering in several cities, including Benghazi in the east and Zintan in the west, according to two Libyan military officials who were coordinating with them. British and American special forces have also been carrying out intelligence gathering operations around Surti. Since the beginning of 2016, British special forces have been escorting teams of MI6 agents to meet with Libyan officials and organize the supplying weapons and training to the Syrian army and to militias fighting against ISIS. On February 27, 2016, the Telegraph reported that British special forces had deployed alongside its U.S. counterparts in the city of Misrata to stop Islamist militants' progress. Their main role is to give tactical training to local militias and to build an army to fight ISIL. In May 2016, it was reported that British special forces have engaged in frontline combat against ISIL in Libya. In particular they destroyed two IS suicide vehicles that were targeting Libyan fighters. On May 12, at the Shad Ada Bridge, 50 miles south of Misrata, the approach of a suicide vehicle sent Libyan forces fleeing in panic, British special forces intervened and destroyed the vehicle with a missile. An estimated dozen U.S. special forces have been operating out of a base near Misrata and have been in action near Tripoli. The U.S. publicly supports three groups who claim the right to govern the country in the fight against ISIS. In a plan disclosed in late 2015, Britain was to offer the Libyan government 1,000 troops as part of a 5,000 strong combined with Italy to train and equip the Libyan forces rather than take part in frontline fighting. In addition, British Defence Minister Michael Fallon announced that Britain is sending 20 troops from the 4th Infantry Brigade to Tunisia to help prevent Islamic State fighters from moving into the country from Libya. In June 2016, it was reported that as militants were retreating from Surti and some fighters reportedly cutting off their beards and long hair to blend in with civilians as militia fighters allied to the unity government pushed into the city in tanks and armed trucks. The militias, mostly from Misrata, are allied to and are the main fighting force for the U.N. brokered unity government installed in Tripoli the previous year. On June 11, the BBC reported that Libyan forces claim they have retaken control of part of Surti after fierce fighting with militants from Islamic State. In July 2016, UN Secretary General Ban Ki moon said his fighters in Libya are facing the distinct possibility of defeat in their last stronghold and are likely to scatter elsewhere in the country and the region. At the beginning of 2016, the Islamic State group was believed to have more than 5,000 fighters in Libya, by August 2016, estimating there could be less than 1,000 left, by August 9, only 350 ISIS fighters remained in Surti. U.S. and British special forces were involved in the battle for Surti. U.S. troops were operating out of a joint operations center on the city's outskirts. Their role was limited to supporting forces unity government forces, providing direct, on-the-ground support. On September 22, Stars and Stripes reported that since the start of the battle to retake Surti by Libyan forces, many Islamic State members fled the city, looking to hide among the population, relocate to other Libyan towns or attempting to leave Libya altogether. 
The BBC reported that an ISIS announced the establishment of its ISISK in January 2015, it was the first time that is had officially spread outside the Arab world. Within weeks, the group appeared in at least five provinces in Afghanistan, Helmand, Zabul, Farah, Logar and Nangarhar trying to establish pockets of territory from which to expand. In the first half of 2015, ISISK managed to capture large parts of territory in eastern Nangarhar province. This became the de facto capital principally for two reasons, its proximity to the tribal areas of Pakistan, home of ISIS-KS top leaders, and the presence of some people who follow a similar Salaf-slash-Wahhabi interpretation of Islam to ISIS. ISISK is also trying to get a foothold in northern Afghanistan, where it aims to link up with Central Asian, Chechen and Chinese Uyghur militants, its numerical strength inside Afghanistan vary, ranging from 1,000 to 5,000. In February 2015, ISILK Deputy Commander Mullah Abdul Rauf Kadam was killed in a U.S. drone strike along with five others, his successor met the same fate a month later, and since then, the Islamic State has been absent from the southern Afghanistan. A report says that, according to a Tariqai Taliban Pakistan spokesperson, in July 2015, a U.S. drone strike killed Shahidullah Shadid, a senior leader of an ISIL group for the Khorasan region, and 24 other militants, in Nangarhar province in Afghanistan. In January 2016, President Obama sent a directive to the Pentagon to make it easier for the military to get approval for strikes in Afghanistan targeting militias that have sworn allegiance to the Islamic State. For three weeks in that month, the United States military carried out at least a dozen operations, including commando raids and airstrikes, many of these raids and strikes taking place in the Tora Bora region of Nangarhar province. American commanders in Afghanistan said they believed that between 90 and 100 Islamic State militants had been killed in these recent operations. On February 1, 2016, U.S. airstrikes in Nangarhar province eastern Afghanistan killed 29 ISIS fighters and struck the terrorist group's FM radio station. On February 21, it was reported that just over a week before, Afghan forces supported by U.S. airstrikes pushed ISIL militants out of their stronghold in Nangarhar province in a military operation that is ongoing and had killed a total 43 Islamic State militants by February 22. On March 6, 2016, Afghanistan's president announced that the ISILK had been defeated in the eastern parts of the country, Afghan forces claimed victory following the 21-day operation in two districts in Nangarhar province, claiming at least 200 militants killed. Following this operation, an official confirmed that Islamic State militants had moved into Kunduz province and into Kunar province. In early April 2016, it was reported that U.S. and Afghan forces had killed 1,979 suspected militants, 736 others wounded and 965 detained between April 2015 and March 2016. ISIS militants have also been trying to flee into Ghazni and Nuristan province whilst there has been a rise in defections from the group to the government and the Taliban. U.S. commanders in Kabul have scaled back their threat assessment for ISILK. Since January, the U.S. and its allies launched between 70 and 80 airstrikes on his militants in Afghanistan. In late June 2016, his militants attacked police checkpoints in the Khat area of Nangarhar province and heavy fighting ensued, 
as many as 36 as militants were killed in the assaults, at least a dozen Afghan security forces and civilians were killed, with another 18 wounded. The latest attacks indicate the group remains a potent threat to a government. On July 23, 2016, following the Kabul bombing, Afghan forces and U.S. special forces backed by U.S. airstrikes began an operation to retake parts on Nangarhar province from ISISK militants. Over 24 and July 25th whilst clearing areas of southern Nangarhar with Afghan Special Operations troops, five U.S. Special Forces troops were wounded by small arms fire or shrapnel, making it the first reported instance of U.S. troops being wounded in fighting is in Afghanistan. On July 26, one of the most important leaders of is in the region and one of the founders of the ISISK, Saad Emirati, was killed along with 120 other suspected militants in Khat district, Afghan troops pushed into Khat district, meeting little resistance due to heavy air and artillery bombardment that forced ISIL fighters to flee into nearby mountain areas, Afghan forces found an already destroyed training camp. Overall, the operation reclaimed large and significant parts of eastern Afghanistan, forcing ISIL militants back into the mountains of southern Nangarhar with hundreds of his militants killed. The estimated size of the ISISK in January 2016 was around 3,000, but by July 2016 the number has been reduced to closely 1,000 to 1,500 with 70% of its fighters come from the TTP. In the operation, Afghan forces, backed by the U.S., killed an estimated 300 ISIS fighters. Between January and early August 2016, U.S. aircraft conducted nearly 140 airstrikes against ISIS targets in Afghanistan, according to the U.S. military. On October 4, 2016, a U.S. soldier from B Company, 2nd Battalion, 10th SFG was killed by a roadside bomb blast in Achen, Nangarhar Province. He was on a patrol with Afghan forces during an operation against ISILK militants. This marked the first time a U.S. serviceman was killed in combat against his militants in the country. On December 24, 2016, Military.com reported that Brigadier General Charles Cleveland said that ISIL-K's presence in the country has been pushed back from nearly a dozen districts to just two or three, the number of its members in Afghanistan had been reduced to about 1,000 from an estimated strength of between 1,500 and 3,000 members the previous year. Overall. U.S. troops in Afghanistan conducted more than 350 operations against the IS and Al-Qaeda this year. In early December, General John Nicholson, the international coalition's top military commander in Afghanistan, said U.S. led counterterrorism operations and Afghan government forces had killed 12 of the organization's top leaders in the country. U.S. officials have said his fighters are primarily located in Nangarhar and Kunar provinces. Military.com reported that Nicholson estimated that his forces had killed about 500 ISIS fighters throughout 2016, these losses accounted for about 25 to 30 percent of ISIS-K's total number of fighters and reduced its foothold in the country from nine districts to three. In February 2017, The Washington Post reported that U.S. forces conducted more than 1,000 strikes in Afghanistan in 2016, including 267 against ISK and 57 targeted Al-Qaeda. The BBC also reported that ISISK has largely been eliminated from southern and western Afghanistan by the Afghan Taliban and military operations conducted by Afghan and US-NATO forces.
Several hundred ISISK fighters have been killed in clashes with the Afghan Taliban. In early April 2017, The Washington Post reported that Captain Bill Salvin, a spokesman for NATO's mission to Afghanistan that Afghan and international forces have reduced ISISK-controlled territory in Afghanistan by two-thirds and killed around half of their fighters in the previous two years. Since the beginning of 2017, there have been 460 airstrikes against terrorists, he added that the affiliate has an estimated 600 to 800 fighters in two eastern Afghan provinces. The Army Times reported that in early March 2017, American and Afghan forces launched Operation Hamza to flush ISISK from its stronghold in eastern Afghanistan, engaging in regular ground battles. Stars and Stripes reported that General Dalat Waziri, spokesman for Afghanistan Euro Trademark S Defense Ministry, said that for four weeks before the April 13 Nangarhar airstrike, Afghan special forces unsuccessfully attempted to penetrate the area because of the difficult terrain and improvised explosive device planted by ISIS-KP militants. On April 13, the Nangarhar airstrike took place, Stars and Stripes reported that 94 ISISK militants, including four commanders were killed by a GBU-43 slash Moab bomb that was dropped on an ISIS tunnel complex in Achen district. The Huffington Post reported that the bomb was dropped from a U.S. Lockheed MC-130. In late April Military Times reported that Captain Bill Salvin said an estimated 400 to 700 fighters are active throughout Nangarhar and Kunar provinces. In October 2015, with the approval of the Cameroonian government, the U.S. military deployed 300 personnel to Cameroon, their primary missions will revolve around providing intelligence support to local forces as well as conducting reconnaissance flights. CNN reported that on October 16, 2017, U.S. forces conducted airstrikes against two ISIL training camps located in al Beda Governorate, Yemen, containing an estimated 50 fighters, a U.S. defense official said that this is the first U.S. strike specifically targeting ISIL in Yemen, the strike disrupted the group's attempts to train more fighters. CNN reported that on October 23 that two U.S. airstrikes in al Beda Governorate, the first strike killed seven ISIL terrorists traveling in pickup trucks, a second strike killed a further two ISIL terrorists. Military Times reported that on October 25, two U.S. airstrikes in al Beda Governorate killed nine ISIL fighters, a CENTCOM statement said that a euro or in the last 10 days. U.S. forces have targeted and killed approximately 60 ISIS terrorists in Yemen A. Euro Marfaruk, an al-Qaeda analyst for the Critical Threats Project at the American Enterprise Institute said that A. Euro EAQAP and ISIS cooperate on a tactical level in central Yemen against al-Houthi, Saleh forces, they often CO claim attacks and likely share some militants a euro and that a euro or isis a euro trademark continued presence in yemen is likely sustained by its cooperation with aqap but it does not appear to be growing at this time a euro military.com reported that on november 3rd 2017 that a u.s drone conducted two airstrikes against islamic state in somalia at least six missiles were used which struck in Buka, 37 miles north of Kandala, AFRICOM said in a statement that several terrorists were killed and that the strikes were carried out in coordination with Somalia's government, the strikes marked first time that the U.S. has conducted airstrikes against ISS terrorists in Somalia. CNN reported that U.S. drone aircraft conducted five strikes against al-Shabaab and ISS-linked militants between November 9 and 12, 
killing 36 al-Shabaab and 4 ISS terrorists. The U.S. conducted a three strikes in al-Baida governorate targeting ISIS in Yemen between November 10 and 12, killing five suspected militants. The U.S. now estimates there are between 3,000 and 6,000 al-Shabaab fighters and less than 250 ISS operatives in Somalia. On January 22, 2015, U.S. Ambassador to Iraq Stuart Jones stated that the coalition airstrikes had degraded ISIL, including killing off half of their leaders in Iraq and Syria. In early February 2015, the Australian Defence Minister, Kevin Andrews, stated that more than 6,000 ISIL fighters had been killed in coalition airstrikes since they began and that over 800 square kilometers had been recaptured, yet ISIL's strength was estimated to have grown during this period to around 31,500 core fighters, including 3,000 fighters from Western nations. On February 23, 2015, U.S. General Lloyd Austin stated that over 8,500 ISIL militants had been killed by coalition airstrikes in Iraq and Syria. In early March 2015, General Lloyd repeated this statement, saying that ISIS has assumed a defensive crouch in Iraq, and that we are where we said we would be, in relation to the airstrikes. This was in contrast to Jordan's claim that its airstrikes alone had killed 7,000 ISIL militants in Iraq and Syria over the course of three days, from 5 to February 7, 2015. On January 21, 2016, France's Defence Minister Jean-Yves Le Drian stated that over 22,000 ISIL fighters had been killed by coalition airstrikes in Iraq and Syria. In August 2016, U.S. Army Lieutenant General Sean McFarland told reporters at a news briefing although it's no measure of success and it's difficult to confirm. We estimate that over the past 11 months we've killed about 25,000 enemy fighters. When you add that to the 20,000 estimated killed prior to our arrival, that's 45,000 enemies taken off the battlefield. In December 2016, a senior U.S. military official told CNN that as many as 50,000 ISIS fighters have been killed since the war against the terror group began. According to Air Wars, a team of independent journalists, by August 2015, 450 civilians had been killed by the U.S.-led coalition air campaign against ISIL in Iraq and Syria. By that time, the US-led coalition officially acknowledged only two non-combatant deaths. According to Air Wars, by January 2016, between 815 and 1,149 civilian non-combatants appear likely to have been killed in 135 incidents where there is fair reporting publicly available of an event and where coalition strikes were confirmed in the near vicinity on that date. According to Air Wars, about 1,000 civilians had been killed by the U.S.-led coalition air campaign in March 2017 alone. On February 1, 2015, Iraq's Foreign Minister Ibrahim al jafari stated that the war on ISIL was effectively a Euro-World War III a Euro trademark, due to ISIL's proclamation of a worldwide caliphate, it also aims to conquer the world, and its success in spreading the conflict to multiple countries outside of the Levant region. Speaking of ISIL's destruction of pre-Islamic sites in the region, Syria's head of antiquities, Mamoun Abdul Karim, stated that this is the entire world's battle. The table below summarizes each country's level of involvement in the overall international intervention against ISIL.
several countries that are militarily involved do also provide humanitarian aid.